when I was 16 years old, I got, went to work in the grocery store, and I met Mike. And for me, it was infatuation at first sight. <laughs> she was the cashier, and I was the packer back in the day. And that's where we met. We dated for three years. I got pregnant. We got married in that order. I thought it was a pretty good marriage. I thought it was a pretty normal marriage. Changed jobs and became a wine salesman and started making three times the amount of money in one third the amount of time. Started drinking frequently, and then that led me into drugs. Then I started uh, committing adultery with a number of different people. I would go home at three or four in the morning and, and tell Johnny the next morning that I had a business engagement, and that's why I was out so late. I had no idea that Mike was drinking, and I had no idea why he was staying out. And then that one morning when I woke up and I had no money in my purse and no checkbook, I didn't know what to do. I was shocked. So I took our two children and I went and I moved in with my parents. And one night my daughter, she asked me, Mom, do you believe that God could do anything? And I said, yes, I do. And she started to pray that God would bring Mike and I back together again. But that was the one thing I didn't believe that God could do. What I didn't know was at that very moment when she prayed, Mike had gone to talk to our neighbors. And he asked me uh, how things were going, and I said, not too well. I had filed for divorce. And he said, well, have you ever invited Christ to run your life? And I said, well, I've been going to church my whole life. I still go to church. In fact, I was Sunday school superintendent. He said, I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you ever committed your life to Christ and make him your Lord and Savior. Over a period of about three hours, he and his wife explained to me what that meant and that I was going to have to choose. So I said, okay, uh, what do I have to lose? I've screwed my life up pretty good. I might as well give it a shot. I really did feel clean and new. I was a new creation. When I left, started reading the word, which became really new to me all of a sudden and started calling Johnny over at her parents' house to, to, so I could tell her. And three days later, I just couldn't stand it. Mike was so happy, he was so joyful, he was so different. I knew that I had to have what he had. So we went back over to the neighbor's house and she got saved and the family got back together. Mike and I went back home that night and the same night that I accepted Christ, Mike told me for the first time that he had been unfaithful to me. And all the feelings that had flooded my heart when I accepted Christ, it was just shattered. And, and my heart was filled with pain and I felt rejected. I was just crushed. But I knew that the God who just forgave me expected me to do that same thing for Mike, and I did forgive him. Our fourth child was born with a very serious heart problem that required two open heart surgeries before he was four. Mike's dad was dying of heart problems, and my father was dying of cancer, and we were so overwhelmed by those things that we were not walking with the Lord the way we should have been. So I started to have that one drink, and after a period of time, I had two, and then I had three. That Once I had the third drink, it was, you might as well keep going. I started uh, committing adultery again, and that went on for a while until one morning, I was at LAX, waiting for an early flight, and I opened my eyes when I was getting up, and I had a vision of Christ at the foot of my bed with his arms out saying, no more of this. Fortunately, I chose to repent and turn away, and that was the end of all of that. But I didn't have the courage to tell Johnny what I had done. The Holy Spirit showed me that my conscience was not clear, that even though I had repented and was forgiven, I hadn't cleared the air with Johnny. So I took her on a walk and I told her what I had done. When he told me that he had committed adultery again, I was devastated. 
because I didn't forgive Mike, the Holy Spirit couldn't work in my heart to take away those feelings of pain and insecurity and all of that. And all I wanted to do was to hurt Mike as much as he hurt me. It was very, very difficult for a number of years. Um, and I, I tried everything I could and I prayed all the time. And somehow the Lord gave me the strength to just live with it, to love her, uh, to try to make up for what I had done wrong. I learned that it had to be something the Lord would do. I decided I was gonna go get a divorce. And the first thing I did was go to my old friend, Laura, and I was shocked when she said to me, your problem is that you have not forgiven him. And I felt this knife just piercing through my heart. And I had to go back and I had to tell Mike. And that basically removed the, the huge wall that was between us for all this time so that the Lord could uh, minister to both of us together. We started reading the word together and praying together. God not only healed my broken heart, but he also healed our marriage. A friend gave us a word from the Lord that God would restore the years the locust had eaten. And this past December, we celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary. I'm Mike. And I'm Johnny. And, and our, our marriage, marriage has, has been, been overhauled, overhauled by, by Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs>